There are three main ways for heat transfer to take place, and they are all dependent on the medium involved. Conduction occurs in solids when their molecules vibrate faster and faster until all of the thermal energy has been evenly distributed. Conduction mainly occurs in solids where the molecules are very close together, and the ability for a solid to conduct energy is measured by the material's thermal conductivity. Convection occurs mainly in fluids. Particles in fluids aren't fixed into a rigid shape. Therefore, particles in warmer regions of a fluid are more spread out compared to particles in colder regions of a fluid, causing differences in density. This difference in density can lead to convection currents, which allow for the circulation of, warm of warmer particles to rise, while colder particles fall. And the last method is through radiation. Radiation occurs when energy is carried by infrared waves in a vacuum, and the hotter an object is, the more radiation is emitted. In this presentation, we're, most, we're mainly going to be focused on conduction and convection, as they are the two main heat transfer mechanisms involved in the heat transfer devices used in espresso and coffee machines. One of the simpler designs for heating water up for your coffee or espresso is the thermoblock. The design consists of a metal block with heating elements inside. Pipes for water are run through the block heating system. The water is brought from a reservoir through the pipes where it is heated up very quickly. Contact points are created from the pipes running through the blocks allowing for the conductive heat transfer to occur. Thermoblocks are generally inexpensive to manufacture and offer rapid water heating. However, the drawback for this mechanism is temperature control. A basic type of espresso maker consists of a single boiler to heat up water required for steaming and brewing. While this method of heat exchange is cheaper and easier to maintain, this limits the coffee maker's ability to heat up and cool down to precise temperatures required for a quality product. After pouring the water into the boiler, the temperature must be selected for either steaming of the milk or brewing of the coffee. Ideally, the milk is steamed first so that a higher temperature is initially selected for evaporating the water. Once the water is evaporated and the milk has been steamed, the temperature is then decreased to the necessary temperature for brewing. The boiler cools down to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit for the optimal extraction temperature. But you need to be careful at this step. If the water is too cold, the result could be a flat, under-extracted coffee. If the water is too hot, there will be a loss in the quality of the final brew. In the figure depicted here on this slide, the design of a single boiler is illustrated. From the, from the reservoir, a pump moves water into the boiler. The user first sets the boiler to the steaming mode to steam the milk. Following this, the boiler is cooled to the brewing temperature and the water is sent through the group head to make the brewed espresso. The steamed milk is added afterward as the, final ex as the final step required for making the espresso. Acting as a proper solution to the limitations of a single boiler setup, the double boiler makes use of two boilers to separately boil water for brewing and steaming. The temperature of each boiler can be adjusted independently of each other, eliminating the need for cooling flushes and saving valuable time for the user. More importantly, this provides the user with more consistency when brewing due to the elimination of inconsistent heating and cooling. In the figure below, the design of a double boiler is illustrated. From the reservoir, a pump moves water into the dedicated boilers for brewing and steaming. Each boiler then allows for independent temperature control, saving time on brewing and providing the user with a more consistent result each time. This setup allows for the user to steam milk and pull shots simultaneously. In the picture on this slide, the design of a heat exchanger for an espresso machine is illustrated. From the reservoir, a pump moves water into a boiler where only steam is produced. The boiler in this setup is strictly for steaming, but there is a heat exchanger inside which heats a water stream to the appropriate brewing temperature. This allows for the user to pull shots and steam milk simultaneously. 
To allow for the user to constantly have hot water to pull shots, the hot water exiting the heat exchanger passes through the group head, the part where hot water is dispensed for brewing, and back down to the bottom of the heat exchanger. However, as a result of using the heat exchanger, controlling the temperature of the hot water is much more difficult than in other mechanisms.